A sunny afternoon, just casually thinking about nothing and how great my life was. And one of my uh, uh, supervisors, chaplains, approached me and says, Hey, I've got a couple I want you to meet. And I'm like, I don't do things like that anymore. <laughs> and he said, No, 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 this is a couple, and uh, they're, they're, they're looking for some people who want to be in a play. Oh. You know, and I'm thinking about exposure, and I'm thinking about how cute I can be. And I said, great, I'm ready to meet them. And then I met them. And I almost changed my mind. Two brothers. They're two brothers. They all know. They actually, there's more than two. Well, they these two, are, these two, two are, um, are credited for funding both right. parties. Both parties. So what happened is, basically, about five, four or five years ago, maybe a little bit longer, there's a thing called Citizens United. Citizens United basically said that, hey, guess what? If you're a fucking corporation, you can put as much money as you no, want. No, profit So they become no profit You can be a no Yes, I understand what that is. But any, any group can put as much. Well, it's not technically correct. Any so I remember that first production, The Birds. Something that really spoke to my personality. I became a peacock. And then they helped me become a peacock. And we walked around and we did drills. And, you know, they actually got on my nerves uh, a lot of the times. Uh, you know, and that's the thing. I did not understand where they were going. I don't think a lot of times they knew where they were going. But anyway, it, it all worked out in the end. And we did one, two, three. And we, did, we did a couple of productions in some really, really cheap, uh, uh, good venues. Um, everything about the birds, well, it, okay, well, the birds was political in a sense. It was political in a sense, and I did not come to understand it until, I guess maybe the events were in play in, 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 in the world, you know, in the news, uh, but it was based on Aristophanes. And, uh, yeah, well, right Happened to you. <laughs> um, it was very, very um, cultured, okay. And so, what it, I think it gave me the introduction to um, what that life was all about. Because I started reading Greek plays, I think, after that. And I wanted, I actually want to do Othello. If you're out there, hello, hi. I want to do Othello. Thank you. Uh, that's my little pitch for uh, whoever sees this. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Othello was a more. Oh, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm digressing again. I know I was asked about how the play was going by wonderful shout out to Michael McIntyre. And uh, he was my chaplain at that time. And so he always, he always knew that, you know, um, I was going to be um, very transparent with him <laughs> about how things were going, you know. And uh, he encouraged me not to quit because I think that was July. July was... <laughs> July was summer. I was looking real nice. And I was like, I can't do this in the afternoon. I need to be somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? But um, he encouraged me not to quit. And, um, and uh, they were just not aware of what was going on. I'm gonna be down. Never again. Shit. Never again. We are the right. Take to the sky, I'm flying free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never again will I look down. No, 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 no. Take to the sky and I shall soar. Yeah. Uh, I had a good friend of mine, shout out to Will Bikes uh, and, and Michael. Uh, Zendejas, I had a real, uh, two good friends of mine that came, you know, and I was very happy that people, I was very happy that people from the mission actually came to the production at the Vortex. Uh, they enjoyed the uh, production. A couple of them said they ain't never heard so much cussing in all their life. <laughs> and uh, 
I know what if, if you want to hear some more, hit me on a Saturday morning. <laughs> no, but uh, they enjoyed it. They were, um, of course, not prepared uh, to uh, receive that kind of artistic, you know, uh, production in, inside of the confines of a Christian mission. You know, all my first sisters and brothers, middle feather in the air when I say motherfucker. Motherfucker! I think that they uh, appreciate what happened because it helped us grow as people. It helped us actually decide what kind of lives we wanted to live, you know. And, and, and we were able to contrast and compare who we are now to who we wanted to be. Hear them crying, let my people go. So go down, go down, Moses, down in Egypt, and tell, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And then I think I was immediately thrust into a position with um, uh, a group of young people who I, I tell you what, I admire them so much. And they are resilient and they are fighters and they are winners. Uh, and that was with Fact, Family and Gap. And uh, uh, I, I just a wonderful group of young people. And we were in another production. Uh, let's see, that was Daroka's Curious Journey, I think it was. just energetic, singing and dancing, you know, that's up right up my alley anyway. So, and it was wonderful. And then I started working with Fact Family. We started doing workshops. Uh, but I got to see stages of autism. I got to see different kinds of autism. And I felt very, very fortunate because they trusted me and I had to trust them. You know, and I became a much more sensitive person. You know, and uh, you know, now you can't label now you can't label somebody for me because I've already seen, you know, uh, you know, I've already seen for myself what it is. So now you can't label somebody for me and tell me what they are until I actually have an experience with them. Uh, where was I at? Yes. So uh, Jesus 911, uh, a production which drew really, really big names. <laughs> I don't want to mention the names. <laughs> But uh, it, it drew a lot of names, a lot of excitement. Uh, uh, it was, um, you know, it's just, I think it was, was just very, very, very um, uh, heavily supported. And uh, of course, uh, we had a lot of skeptics. Uh, we had a lot of critics, from, uh, internal critics. Uh, but I think we proved to them that not only are we about music, uh, we're about we're also about a message and that message is contained inside of the hearts of each individual it becomes it's almost an individual thing when it starts and it becomes corporate global you know and universal in, in its end so uh, it's how different people from different walks of life from different experiences in life can come together and there be one complete message something that goes out to the masses that people can't identify with. We're, we're always about identifying because we're all different and we're all come from different walks of life and have different experiences. There are millionaires that we know and then there are paupers and they're homeless. Uh, we have people who are at the top of their food chain and then we have people who can't even eat 
They don't know anything about a food chain, you know? And with all those many, many uh, uh, different experiences and, and, and collective, and when we come together, it's always one message that we can. We're here, we're not going anywhere. We speak, we have a voice, we make our needs known. Uh, Say it had me bound in my mind everywhere. But Jesus brought me out. Then moving on to um, to um, Jesus nine one one or whatever. We well, did. It was it was uh, whatever uh, we did. It was Holy Day miracles. Uh -huh. Oh no, Holy Day. Um, Everything's a miracle. Holy Day Skid Row. That was the because it was Christmas in Skid Row, but we couldn't call it, so it was Christmas in Skid Row. Holy uh -huh. Day. Someone who was there, please call us, 555-555, and let us know exactly what it was, because all of us here are getting older, and our memories are fading, fading, fading fast. No, but that's Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> oh, but one child, one child. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. I lived in Greensboro all of my uh, formative years up until I guess maybe I was about 22, 23. And then when I left Greensboro, I went and to... why did you leave Greensboro? Why did I leave Greensboro? Yeah. Um, you know, my father passed away. Um, and um, I think one of the things that held me in Greensboro so long is because after daddy got sick, I felt like I was needed, you know. But I, I was a really rebellious... You know, I was nothing like them, I'll tell you that much. You know, my parents are very um, uh, docile. My parents were very docile and, and very conservative. Okay, I'm from a conservative Baptist family. We don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't dip, we don't chew, and we don't run with those who do. I just wasn't like that. I drank, I smoked, I dipped, I chewed, and so a whole bunch of other stuff, you know. And so, <clears throat> um, after my father, you know, uh, passed away, uh, I did not was not as connected with my mother at the time. You know, saying so I thought that that was my ticket to leave. You know, I wanted to be adventurous. I wanted to go experience some things, you know, outside of Greensboro, and and, I, and away I went. You know, and uh, uh, it was from Greensboro to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Florida. Florida to California, and uh, that's why'd you I, move back to LA from Florida? Well, um, I was in the position I was bored, I was bored, and I was stuck, and I was in a rut, and Florida just wasn't going to be it for me, you know. And I didn't want to go to Atlanta because I'd already been there, I certainly wasn't going to go back to Greensboro, you know, because I knew how that was. I wasn't going to stay where I was at, so I decided that I put New York and California uh, in a, uh, I think I like wrote them on two pieces of paper and I shook it up in a hat and I pulled out uh, LA, which of course I wanted to be in New York, but I pulled out LA. So I thought to, I thought to myself, so, uh, this is like maybe Mar let's see, February, this is like February 2000, maybe, yeah, 2000, 2001 somewhere along in there um so i said to myself i'll go to la i'll go to la and if i don't like it by september <laughs> if i don't like it by september i will leave you know and i remember waking up the morning of 9 11 you know and uh i thought to myself well i guess i'll stay <laughs> you know what i'm saying because I was, I was supposed to be in new york at least before the winter 
you know, because, you know, so I can find a job and, you know, get housing straightened out. So, yeah, I remember waking up 9-11 and then looking at all that, you know, going on in New York. And I said, I guess I'll stay. And I think it was about uh, a couple of years later is when, you know, things really went south. Uh, bad relationships, bad investments, bad choices, you know, bad people, uh, no solutions, no kind of, I don't know. There's a couple of crazy things that went on in my life. And fortunately for me, uh, there was a lot of resources, one of which being the Union Rescue Mission and uh, wonderful people down there. What uh, year was that when you were living there, started living there? I'm going to say 2011 through 2014. This world is full of pain and woe. I'm going to build me a wall and be at rest. Sometimes I don't want to be here no more than I will build me a wall and be at rest I'm gonna build me a wall you know that I'm gonna build me a wall I'm, oh, 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 I'm gonna build me a wall I'm build me a wall and be at rest comes out of a southern tradition uh, Southern Baptist, you know, uh, comes out of um, uh, the black experience. You know, we're always looking for rest. Uh, people who are downtrodden and people who are, uh, you know, discriminated against and, and people who have a lot of particular troubles, you know, uh, fitting in mainstream society, which could be any of us based on ethnicity or, you know, uh, sexual identity or class. You know, or religion, it could be any of us. And, and you're always looking for the place of, from the transition from the place of tribulation and toil and sorrow and all that to the place of rest. Yeah.